Today's guest is Jack and Lynette Evans, and they have dedicated their business to giving all the funds to nonprofit organizations in the Valley. Stay tuned. My name is Lynette Evans. I'm from Farrell, Pennsylvania. I reside at Greater Mount Zion Church of God in Christ. My pastor is Reverend Tyrone Stills and First Lady Tracy Stills. And this is my husband, Deacon Jack Evans. Yes, me, and I'm chairman of, vice chairman of the Deacon Board. How I got to this point being a pastor's kid, uh, we left the valley in 68 after my father passed away. And I resided in Millville, New Jersey with my brother, and John Evans, for numerous years and back and forth to church and stuff. I got kind of burned out and I couldn't wait to, you know, get out on my own. It's just a little too much. And I made it back to Pennsylvania in 74 and, and I met my friend that, well, we really wasn't too much friends. So it was more friends with my sister, you know, but God had my God. I never would have dreamed that the great God would have blessed me with such a loving lady that she would be my soulmate that we didn't see eye to eye then, but came back and short story, 41 years later, here we are. There was a couple tragedies that happened and I took some big losses and that was my turning point in life. I was baptized at Second Baptist at 10 years old, but um, through different experiences, we relocated and joined Greater Mount Zion. And there's where we started our uh, business, uh, Seats of Faith Ministry. And we've done a lot of different things in the community, uh, but we were the Rip Connection originally. And uh, God just gave me the vision, us, to turn that around and uh, to serve the people and be a blessing. And this is what we have done. And we've been Seats of Faith Ministry ever since 1988. Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Crossing Pass Television Ministry. And you know, I've been here talking and so forth, and my wonderful, wonderful brother in Christ here, they've been sharing a little bit. And let's go back to the tragedy that happened in you that sort of brought you closer to the Lord, maybe. Five days before Christmas in 1996, my father, Harrison Cromartie, was uh, pierced in a terrible house fire. And that was my turning point to rededicate my life because I was baptized at 10. But that was the need to rededicate my life. And what I did is uh, got saved and I began to volunteer my time as much as I can so I couldn't focus on what had happened. So I'd start being a blessing to people. I went to the ARC house. I was a volunteer. I was aware I was a volunteer and a counselor there and Prince of Peace, I was there running the cash register and I was a volunteer at the Buell Club for 16 years. So I didn't have time to think and God just had me. So you were people. raised in a Christian background yes, of family, right? Yes, My mother was a chairman of the, uh, the uh, kitchen committee at Second Baptist. Second and Baptist? I was, I was her helper. Okay, and, uh, and also uh, did you when you were raised, when you grew up, I suppose you, certain friends you couldn't hang around, right? Because you knew the difference, right? Between, say, religion or, you know, and, and, and having a relationship oh, yes. with the oh, Lord. Oh, yes. And you know what? You know, when you had parents every Saturday, we would come and we would pray and we would have share time. And that was the time to tell your parents and tell your family what was going on, how you felt. So. We always was abreasted about things about the Lord, what was changing in your life, what you did like, what you didn't like. And that was what was I enjoyed in my childhood with my parents. Well, how did you get involved? You know, we're going to talk about the uh, food industry, too. You got involved in a nonprofit organization, too, right? Right. Um, we're, we're, Seeds of Faith is nonprofit, and we've been, uh, we turned everything over. We were formerly the Rib Connection. And right now, we just this year purchased a brand new mobile trailer, which we want to have mobile on wheels. And we're going to still be doing charitable events so we can be a blessing to the community and do bigger and greater things. Well, you know, I have a, in my hand here Seeds of Faith Ministry. Now, you, in fact, I formed a nonprofit 
organization for you, right? Yes, sir. And we're going to talk about that later on. Maybe I can just put this up on the screen here and see if I can get a little picture of this, you know. That's our new trailer that'll be, you'll be seeing it before the summer's out. They're still working on the inside of it, but that's the outside completely done. So if done. people call you, you can take, you, you take it out there? We can take orders. We're going to be mobile service. So if you have a golfing event, if you have any kind of event, a uh, picnic, we will cater and we will bring our mobile unit to you. Well, I'll tell you, I'll show you something here. And I had some of these. I don't know whether this will be on the screen or not, but it tastes good. <laughs> Spare ribs. <laughs> Specialized in barbecue spare ribs and chicken. So, come <laughs> I hope us. we can get that on. You know, poor Matt, we know, he never knows what's going to happen on this program. He just directs it and everything else, you know. <laughs> but anyways, it, it's amazing, though, how God has brought you two together from the testimony you were telling me about before, you know. Now, I want to jump back over to you for a minute, okay? How mm -hmm. did she ever get involved with a goofy guy like you after well, talking to your t testimony? Well, Don, that's the miracle of God because... Uh, in my wildest dreams, if somebody had told me that this was my chosen mate, I wouldn't have believed it because we couldn't even be this close for two minutes without war. Our parents were friends. Uh, we lived in the same town in Farrell. And um, one thing led to another. When my parents passed away and eight months apart, my mother died in May of 67. February of 68, my father passed away. And I had to leave and go to New Jersey and live with my brother, Reverend John Evans. And he took us to church every day of the week. And I just was so tired of church. I love God. My father brought us up. We was well-rounded. There wasn't no verse. Because see, where most kids can go out and play on Saturday, from, eight, from 5 o'clock in the morning, when you, if you got up, if it took you all day, if you didn't get your uh, Sunday school lesson, you couldn't go out. You weren't allowed to go outside. And Lord, don't mess up Sunday morning. <laughs> You're dead me. <laughs> Dad did not. He said, if you can play, you can learn the word of God. If you don't learn that, then you don't need to be out there. He was strict. And so he was really strict seven days a week, you said? Oh, yeah. My father, uh, no, he didn't mind me playing. I played softball and stuff. But one thing about it, when it came to Saturday morning, you weren't allowed to go out and play. Sunday school lesson, you had to get it down. And I mean, when I say down, dot every I, cross every T. Oh, yes. Do you think that had anything to do with you finally had too much church or uh, that, that you were telling me later on what you well, got into we'll talk about? Well, not then. Uh, my brother overdid it. I mean, he worked with uh, Bishop in New Jersey, and uh, we used to run from Vineland, New Jersey, up to Canham, and then into Philly, seven days a week. And I was a little tired and wore out because going every day, I mean, I didn't have a chance to go to parties and stuff like other kids. And it, it took a toll on me. And the church is the wrong place to want to try to talk to a girl, you know. <laughs> but hey, tell the truth, shame the devil. I met more young ladies in church in a little bit. And it's wrong. But I understand why Satan got such a hold on the church because a lot of parents make it easy by overstringling their kids with too much. God's word is more than enough by itself. You don't have to beat it down. He says, train up a child in the way it will go and it won't tray apart. Well, if you train me right, it's in there. Oh, I'm going to fall. I might make mistakes. Oh, yeah. But if God's in there, he's in there. That's what we have to do, make our mistakes. And that's how we learn. So you got back in, you sort of got into the world. Big time. After your father died, you say big time? Oh, yeah. I mean, I was just acting stupid. I was just so glad. It wasn't a party unless it was me. I'd stay out until 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning. It wasn't a party unless I was there. Even when I met her, I told her, hey, this is my time. I worked. We paid the bills. I'm, I'd be out doing nothing, just sitting there just because I didn't want to be home anywhere but anywhere near home because we read the word and we're doing this as long as I was out out of sight out of mind so right. how did you you know you say you met her in church did you meet her in church no I, I moved back to Furl in 74 okay. June of 74 and well and I was over in Youngstown with my brother for about a week or so then middle of June I came to Furl and I just happened to go to her mother's parents house because 
me and her sister were friends because we were mortal enemies. And she was away at college, and she's, I ain't gonna say what my nickname. Jack is here, I said, yeah, I'm, <laughs> Nettie's here. I said, and we just, we started kidding around, and she was in the broadcasting, and at that time, I was working with two of the hottest DJs in New Jersey, been on stage with big, big uh, stars like the OJs and the Manhattans and Cool and the Gang and them. And so we got to talking, and she, I asked her out, and well, after that, 41 years later, I, I have no complaints. God knew what he was doing. <laughs> but you, when you were in the playground in the world, should we call it, right? You, you were married to her. Yeah, and acting like a fool. Huh? So you were still lost. Very much so. Very much, you know, even though, we, even though you know the Lord and you're raised in a family and so forth, but yes. you know, God, you, God can only go so far sometime. You know, we have to be very careful today that people say you can do whatever you want, you're gonna to go to heaven. And that's, that's not scriptural, right? Oh, no. no, it's not scriptural. And how do you find out when you, when you're, all your friends, when that, like, you come here, you found a whole different uh, bunch of friends here than you did where you're back there, right? Well, I knew the majority of them because I was from here, but uh, real true friendship uh, is something uh, that you earn. And I, I had a bunch of young men that I grew up with. Yeah, we were, had our differences, but your word was your word. If you say you want to do something, and, you know, basically, we pretty well stuck to it. But a tragedy had to hit my life to turn me around. What do you mean a tragedy? Um, all the stupid stuff, you know, how you get out in the world and you want to do everything. But when my brother's kids. That's okay. Jesus. Praise God. I just had to, I said, Lord, I couldn't do this anymore. Even in, then he gave me the ministry in 88. I said, Lord. If this is what you want me to do, then you have to change me. Yes. Because yes. I didn't want to drink no more, smoke, or run the street. I said, if you do this, Lord, I'm yours. Other than that, you said you hate a lukewarm person, you're spoiled. Then you can leave me and let me die the way I am going to hell. I just had enough. I had enough tragedies in my life, but them kids took my heart. These are tears of joy. I know they're in heaven, but I got kids. And anybody, and plus we just lost our great-granddaughter, um, grandson, not even a month ago, but hey, God is awesome. Yes, he is. Was you married to her when that Oh yeah, I am. Tragedy? Oh yeah, we've been married for 41 years. We yes. were married. Yes. This was about so, 20 years ago. Yeah. So you must have been very close to the to the tragedy that happened, am I right? Yeah, those are my brother's kids. And brother's kids? Yeah, and, uh, his one daughter and my daughter could be twins. And when, matter of fact, my daughter was just here from North Carolina. And just thinking about coming on the program, I thought about Sherry. And none of them had a chance to really live, but God said he don't make no mistakes. He loved them the best. So in my tears, it's tears of joy knowing that they're there. And if I live right, I get to see him again. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you, you Jesus. I notice you have an awful strong prayer life. And in our Bible study, you come to my Bible study, right? Do you enjoy that? Awesome Bible study. I wish everybody around the world could just sit in and see how God uses you to expound the word yes. that they can understand where they're at. A lot of Bible studies, they talk up here, but the people are down here. And in your Bible study, there's no big eye or little use. You want to be where they are. So as God gives you the utterance to speak, you can bring them in on that level. I've had some people tell me that you and her, you have prayed for them in our prayer meeting, you know. Yes. And they have really been blessed by the anointing that you have on that because when you pray, you're praying from the heart, yes. they can see it. Thank you. And you like to pray, don't you? Oh yeah, I love to pray. Being a chosen intercessor, people don't understand a man's pain. It's not my pain that brings the tears. 
now I understand why they call me Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, because I could be sitting here laughing and somebody has deaths or tragedy in their life. It feels like a ton just fell on me. You can't breathe. Uh, it takes your breath away. And they don't understand it. My kids didn't understand. They said, Dad, you're so strong. Why are you always crying? I said, these are tears for other people. This is a gift that the Lord gave me along with others. And I'm just bearing somebody else's pain. I said, but Dad, that don't make me less of a man. I'm just doing, carrying somebody else's pain for them. That's okay. I think sometimes being raised as a pastor, kid as we call it, right? Sometimes that really comes back. You know, Bible says in uh, Proverbs, I think, train up a child in the ways of the Lord, yes. Proverbs 22 there. And, 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 and you know, in a year later years, everything will be okay in a sense is what it's saying, right? But yes. we still go through tragedies oh, yeah. after we become a Christian, right? And you went through it too, right? And, oh, absolutely. And you have to re rely on each other too, right? Yes, you do. What did you find out whenever, he, whenever you know, when he was going through that? Was you right there with him? Right there by his side because w when his life changed, God does a work in both. And he really took the rough edges and smoothed them out and made us one united. And we work together in everything that we do. We put our heart and our soul in everything that we do. And, you know, if one thing I can say about both of you, since I met you and f formed your nonprofit organization, again, I'm going to show this picture up here real quickly to, to show people here. Uh, it's called the Seeds of Faith Ministry, right? Yes, and, it is. Uh, and now, what I really impressed me is that, and what you told me, and you're not telling you to glorify yourself, that on Buell Park Day, uh, I think it's Buell Park Day, they call it, right? Buell Day. Buell, Buell Day in, Hermity, in Sharon, Pennsylvania, but yes. maybe 10,000, 20,000 people come. You take your organization over there, right? Yes, we and, have. And you sell that stuff all day long, and yes, you have people do. help you, right? Oh, yes. And you donate a lot of that money to... That's our biggest fundraiser that we have during the season, and Wonderful. what we've been able to do is be a blessing to other nonprofit, or as God leads us to give, that's what we do in our committee and board, uh, you know, come together and uh, make decisions, but we've done a lot. And it was through those uh, fundraisers. Well, I like it because um, not only the Water Fire, Buell Day, Pumpkin Fest, Art Fest, we raise money all year round. He started out with a 500 then a $1,000 scholarship to a worthy student at Ferrell from 207, from 90 to 207. 1992 to 207. 207. And um, we blessed so many to get books and get an education. And it's been a great learning experience even uh, for us, Mr. Reed, that to be a blessing is the greatest part of ministry. And the joy that I get to see the smiles of but you know, kids. a lot of people out there don't really realize what your ministry is doing. You, they think you're just in for business and you tithe your income and mm -hmm. to other ministries or oh, yes. naturally mm -hmm. make a living off of it or whatever you can a little bit. But that's, your heart there is to really meet people from yes. what I understand. I can see by talking to you and I can see how the tears of your eyes. Well, how hey, I got a great wife that backs me, but we gave so much to charity, but that's the easy part, the giving part. The part, I guess, is like for your ministry, the support part, you know, people, yada, 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 say, yeah, I'm, I'm here for you, but midnight hour, like I shared with you at your Bible study, you don't have to call somebody to pray. God already got somebody praying. And that's the best part. You know what? One time I heard you talk about you done so much for the Buell Club, but down there on, what was it you bought? Uh, uh, two years ago, we uh, g gave it a facelift. And from uh, the proceeds that we made all through the season, we were able to raise $2,500 and we just did the complete facelift. To down the, at the Buell? Uh, the, at the Buell uh, Club, Club, the, uh, the, 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 the kids room, see, the game room. Uh, no. See, a lot of people out there, they don't tie their income. They're not going to tie their income. But, you know, tithing income is not going to get you to heaven, by the way, either, right? Not at all. But it's a part of it's growth, right? Oh, yes. And some people, after they get saved, they start growing. 
you know, and I know tithing is working. It's in the Bible. Malachi 3, 8 says, will a man rob God? You need to have we robbed God in tithes and offerings, yes. you know. So I could throw scripture in there, but I'm not trying to tell anybody out there that God knows the heart. Oh, yes, so yes. your heart is so heavy to help other kids, maybe, or oh, organizations, oh, right? Yes. And here you are today. I never thought you'd be on TV, right? No. <laughs> oh, no. That's true. But, but, you know, I always said when you meet me, get your shoes on, right? That's <laughs> well, right. All the years we've been knowing you, uh, even when we were in the mall, you come by, you just said, uh, I'm just passing through. But here, I want to plant a seed. I told my wife, I said, you know what? This guy's going to start a windstorm in this place, planting seeds. He just don't know every time he plant one. God's pitting his army up. Yeah, people won't be able to come to the well, mall shop well, after a while. Yeah, but you had all that good food over the mall there. And my, <laughs> my wife knows when I yes. come home with a whole bunch of whatever, you know. <laughs> that you. Uh, you know, because, hey, so you give $10, $15 and for food, you know. The main thing is you're helping somebody else. That's you know, the and, whole and part of it all. People, I don't do it greedily, and, and a lot of people, they, 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 they just don't want to do it, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But the main thing is that I, I am so impressed with you too of the way you want to put money out to help other kids, scholarships, you know, yes. and, and, and still, most of all, the Word of God. That's the that's, key. That's the key. That's the most important part. No, you're a pastor too, right? No, deacon. I'm an ordained deacon and a deacon, okay. licensed now, evangelist. What church do you go to there? Greater Mount Zion, Church of God in Christ, and where my pastors, the Tyrone T. Stills, First Lady Tracy Stills. Yeah, well, Pastor Steele, I had him on our program here too, you know. Yes, you did. But, you know, it's amazing. I want to, I know time runs so fast here. I want to get back to you. Have you seen or what do you expect in the next year coming as far as your ministry is concerned? Do you see a lot of things coming? I see great visions. Right now we're doing our recreational where we're going to be introducing new things to our menu. And we hopefully, before the season's out, they are working on that trailer and we're going to be having a grand opening. So that'll be in the papers and it'll be well advertised. But so you can take that trailer out to a... Uh, uh, ball game or any golf tournament, golf anything, tournament or um, something, right? Yes, if they call on us, we'll be there. It's not just a vending trailer; it's the first mobile catering service. I'll be able to come to your house and cook a meal fit for a king. I keep telling everybody anything from crown roast to pheasant in a glass. I'll be able to do it and never have to come in the house. So why well, pay money to go rent a hall? When I can bring it to you, you can so set up the So you could tent. go right to their home and there's oh, a yes. wedding or after picnic, there. If you're having and a picnic affair at, at Buell Park, Buell Park, we'll bring it right there. Everything right there in your front yard, right, right out the And you train. bring it right there and cook it right Absolutely. on there. Absolutely. I have convectional ovens, everything in there. Just do it all right there. State wow. of the art. Wow. It's got its own mobile generator. Just pull up, pop the top, and I'm ready to get served to people. When you finally committed your life to the Lord or recommitted it, whatever you want to call it, right? Re. <laughs> right? Rededicated, right? Yes, sir. How's it now? Isn't it exciting? More than exciting. I'm looking forward to the next level. This, I just pray the Lord give us longevity to enjoy it. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, you know, <laughs> the people that I see on television today, and a lot of them are, doing a lot of things out there, but this young couple here, according to my age, <laughs> I never knew you were both that old, you know, but I see something coming with them that if you're out there and you have a outing or whatever, we, we're, we're, our Crossing Pass is always trying to uh, help other ministries. Oh, that's, absolutely. that's the way, that's the name Crossing Pass. You see, a lot of people don't know, but like uh, f uh, about 19, uh, when I got saved in 1974, I asked the Lord for a name of a ministry that didn't glorify myself. And mm -hmm. I was in the cellar of my home. And I'm sure as I'm sitting there, I saw the words come crossing paths. Praise God. And I said, Praise and that's the, that's the name we've been using in our ministry. You all have to cross paths someday with Jesus, yes, right? Absolutely. And I hope that someday that this crossing path, which is in the, in the Shenango Valley, Joyce and I have been on the air now for many, many years. Uh, 
Uh, we run tours to Israel. We have uh, uh, weekend retreats up at Cook's Forest. We have uh, Lancaster tours we're going to run. We, we have Bible studies at my house, which they come to, and which we're limited now. I can only take about eight more. But every Tuesday night, we have Bible studies. And Joyce is quite active, believe me, uh, answering that phone all day long. We have 24-hour uh, answering service for our prayer requests out there. Not nobody, nobody gets a salary in our ministry in the years that I've been in this ministry, 42. And uh, we all just donate our time and they donate their time too. And they even brought food down to one of our, uh, our tapings down here in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. So, you know, you can always do something for the Absolutely. Lord. But you know what? I told you this before, there's no secret service Christianity in, in, with the Lord. You're either with the Lord or you're not. Or you're not. <laughs> you see, there's two judgments coming up, people. And I didn't know much of this. Don't forget, I, my qualifications for being on TV today is I flunked Bible twice at Westminster College. So that's intelligence of I am. But <laughs> <laughs> see, God uses anybody. Oh, yes. And he chose me and he chose everybody. You know, I, I didn't choose him. You know, he chose me. He chose mm -hmm. you. Oh, yeah. He would have none lost, none out there. So we don't preach a form of religion on this uh, television ministry. We put a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I use an illustration with my wife that my first wife died from Lou Gehrig's disease, a terrible disease, and my current wife, Joyce, ran around with her for 20 years. So she knew me. She knew all about me, but she didn't know me personally until mm -hmm. she married me. Well, you can be sitting in a church all your life, and you know all about Jesus, but you don't know him personally. Doesn't that make a good point? Oh, yeah. I mean, you can sit there, people, and you think your works are going to get you to heaven. Giving money is going to get you to heaven, which is you go, you're going to do automatically, I promise you, if you get saved and born again, according to John 3, 3 and 1 Peter 1, 23, you're going to, get, you're going to want to donate your money to the Lord because it's His. Everything you got comes from God. Absolutely. And if you're out there today and you don't know whether you're saved, we have telephone numbers. You can call our ministry at 724-981-7777 or 1-855-981-9777. And somebody will answer the phone. If you want a Bible, we'll, we'll send you a Bible. Our ministry has given away thousands of Bibles since I've been in existence. We have something always going on in crossing paths. If you want a church, we'll recommend a church in the Shenango Valley surrounding communities. We are now on 35 states through Cornerstone uh, Television out of Wall, Pennsylvania. 35 states and 200 cable companies because of people like you out there, whether it be $5, $10, or $100. Remember, God loves you. And you've never done anything that he will never, he'll forgive you no matter what you've done. Call that number right now. God bless you. We love you. Thank you.